All right. Welcome everyone to Directed IRA's November yeah. webinar. God, November, geez. Yeah, we'll have the 2021 starting November. Done. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Solo 401k, one of the great accounts that you can self-direct. This is for those of you that are self-employed, small business owners that can use the Solo K. We're going to dig into it today, break down the basics, and hit a couple of advanced topics um, on the subject as well. So Aaron and I are going to be, you know, doing trying to ham it up. <laughs> doing our thing. So this is retirement account and taxes. So it can be a little boring, but it's powerful. So forgive us if we try to insert some humor here to keep it light. Um, we're gonna take some questions. We'll take a couple of breaks for questions as we go through, um, just to kind of see what questions you guys have. So feel free to use the Q&A. Yes, yeah, not in the, the chat, chat box. Okay. Right. Yeah. Put it over in the Q&A. Any other direction you wanna give on questions? No, just, uh, you know, we'll get through them throughout. Like I'll moderate it. We also have some amazing solo 401k specialists at Directed IRA, so they're on, uh, they'll be helping answer some of the questions and we'll just get through as many as we can try to keep it a little bit interactive like always we will have the slides up uh tomorrow or friday at the latest so you have the presentation of our slide deck so if you miss something don't worry um and just you know have a good time with us and we'll do some more q a to wrap things up at the end but we'll go a full hour like we will go boom we'll do it yeah so, so we'll be bouncing back. We're gonna share some slides on the screen. Of course, we got them behind us here so we can reference them, but we'll hit them on the screen. And then like Aaron mentioned, they'll go up with the recording as we've done with all the webinars. So just give us a couple of days and we'll get that up uh, with the recording. I just put my Clark Kent glasses. Uh, yeah. Did you notice that? Just Aaron's, yeah. Aaron's just trying to look smart today. <laughs> He's got his smart guy glasses. Um, I really need a pair. I need to. I you have a cowboy hat and other props, so yeah. you're good. I have a cowboy hat. We got lots of current clients at Directed and over at the KQS Law Firm, so thanks for tuning in. We always appreciate y'all's support, and uh, it's great. And yes, Matt is drinking water from Starbucks, it appears. It's like very expensive water, premium filtered water from Starbucks. <laughs> this is free, okay? This is my daughter this morning taking her, she's in high school, to get a drink this morning, and I get a cup of water. That's what you got. <laughs> So we will we will go back and forth uh, from sh sharing the, the screen, um, both through Zoom and then seeing on the background. So hang tight with us on that. I know some of you have chatted that in before. So that's what we'll be doing throughout. So cool. All right. Well, this is the part of the presentation where attorney Matt has to come out. And he's not the fun Matt. He's not the Matt you want to hang out with. He's kind of a buzzkill. Um, but every once in a while, you need attorney Matt, like right now. Keep in mind, this is our disclaimer. This is meant to be educational in nature today. This is not constituting attorney client relationships, it's not financial advice. We're just trying to educate you. So let's just remember that what this is about. We're trying to educate you and have a good time. Um, right, now let's get rid of attorney Matt and go back to the other Matt. He's much better, trust me. <laughs> better looking too. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, well, Aaron, you wanna go to roadmap what we're gonna talk about today? Just get the yeah. big picture. Yeah, so we, we, we have it up here. Um, you know, there's a handful of things that we want to cover. Um, it's going to be going to be a great time. So we're going to go over some crypto. There's a couple different ways that you can invest in cryptocurrency with a solo K or directly with a custodial account with us. So we'll get that covered. There's really four key points that we want to cover. You know, when considering using a solo K, we also have a great informational page on the Directed IRA website. You can just go to the solo 401k section. And it's it's a lot like yeah. it's it's pretty intense like you could spend yeah. an hour or two just on that page with all the info we have on there we'll talk about you know do you need an llc um, we'll go over the backdoor 401k some of the qualifications um there is increased contribution limits for 2022 so that's cool yeah. not on ira that's yeah. kind of a bummer but so okay got you know got got hooked up there we'll go over udfi tax and you know doing some loans uh, with the solo K and then we have some cool um, retirement account guides that we'll provide to you as well for additional education. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty much what we got. What we got going. Okay. Well, let's dig into the first topic here and I'm just going to do, well, oh, you know, let's just say a little bit about us. That's I'm, always good. I'm Matt, you know, CEO here at Directed IRA. Pretty also, big deal. Also an attorney. I wrote a book, if you didn't know, about self-directed IRAs called the Self-Directed IRA Handbook, which has an entire chapter 
on solo Ks. We've been doing these for a while, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, but I also write uh, an entrepreneur. I'm also a new contributor at Cryptopedia, which is mm -hmm. pretty exciting. So yeah, I just have my first article going up um, in the next few days. So, um, and of course it's going to be a hot, hot retirement account on crypto. So absolutely. All right, Aaron, I'll let you, you know, say yeah, something. Yeah. So, so show. Aaron Halderman, uh, CEO, directed IRA, um, I guess of what are you Batman and, uh, Mark Robin and I'd be the Joker maybe. <laughs> So we, we love what we do here at Directed. I'm also very well versed in real estate and note investing. I publish a, a monthly newsletter publication called the Noteworthy Newsletter and also just play a big role in, you know, all things at Directed IRA and uh, doing the Self-Directed IRA Summits, which we just did just a couple weeks ago. Sold that thing out, had a couple hundred people. Yeah. It was awesome. We did yeah. it in person too. Yeah. Launched a charity. Yeah, which was awesome. So we'll, we, you know, we're always doing some cool, fun stuff. Um, you know, homeschool our children. Got five kids, uh, six children. I'm sorry, and uh, one of them <laughs> I left out because she's uh, moved out of the house. So that's why I mm -hmm. discount her a little bit, I guess. But love what we do here and just have a good time. Yeah. Okay, let's get in the topic. I'm gonna start sharing some slides, so you don't have to look at our faces here for a moment. You're welcome. <laughs> Um, <laughs> spare you the misery <laughs> yeah all right so let's get into the topic the first thing i think it's important to understand about a solo 401k and this is our account guide on it mm -hmm. the reason it's cool let's just talk about why it's cool here for a second um and, and we're gonna make some comparisons to an ira in an ira if i can only put like six grand a year into an ira right now, if I'm starting at zero, that's going to take me a while to get enough money in there to really make a significant investment. Mm -hmm. If I want to buy real estate or something, it's going to take a while. On the solo 401k side, though, I can put in 58000 a year into that account. If I got a spouse, they could also put in 58 grand. We could put in 116 grand a year, married couple, into a solo 401k versus 6000 or 12000 on the IRA side. So for someone looking to get a lot more new dollars mm -hmm. in through contributions, the solo K gives you way more bang for your buck. What's also cool about the solo K, you can have Roth accounts and traditional accounts within the solo K. You, you don't have just have to do one or the other. You can if you want to do one or the other, but you could do both. All right, we'll go over some of those rules on how that works. Um, there's some nuances here we'll talk about on UDFI, which is a tax that can apply to IRAs when they use debt to leverage an investment. UDFIs are, or sorry, solo Ks are exempt from UDFI tax on leveraged real estate only. Um, and there's loans. You can take a loan from your 401k to yourself up to 50 grand. You got to pay it back in five years. That's something you can't do with an IRA. So there's some perks on the solo mm -hmm. K side. Anything you want to say on a solo K, why people are doing it or why it's interesting to people? Well, uh, just a couple things. So when well, you hit on the UDFI, so, there, and we'll get into that. So UDFI tax doesn't apply, but UBIT can, um, which is separate. But a lot of people, I think, forget that you can have a Roth bucket and a traditional bucket. Yeah. You know, we got, we, I, I saw a couple of questions come through uh, one of our internal um, communication lines are directed and, you know, people are like, well, I just want to max out my Roth. Like, how yeah. do I get all those funds like into Roth or how much can I yeah. get into there? So. You can totally do that. We'll, we'll get into that. But it's great for like a small business owner. If you don't have, you know, any employees, like there's just a bunch of cool stuff. Mm -hmm. And those contribution limits are cool. Like being able to max that out. Like, you know, how many investments do you know, like other than maybe doing some crypto or something you can do with $6,000? Yeah. You know, there's yeah. there's not a ton. There's some crowdfunding deals, some private companies. And yeah. Stuff. I mean, most of our clients self-directing an IRA besides crypto are rollovers and transfers right exactly. they've you've been building up your retirement account for years you have an old employer 401k and you rolled that to a self-directed mm -hmm. you're not starting at zero typically now some people do um you know everybody starts at zero to some degree but um it's not some degree. everybody starts at zero mm -hmm. with their retirement accounts so um but the, the solo k is great and this is it's also nice because at year end right now we have a lot of self-employed clients that are like, I need tax deductions this year. I've had a great year. Maybe I want to do Roth because I want the tax-free growth in the future, but maybe I want some traditional contributions because I just want tax deductions in 2021. I'm going to get crushed on taxes. Mm -hmm. And so it's also a great year-end tax strategy is the solo 401k. Now, here's one important point on the solo 401k. 
If you are wanting to make 2021 contributions, you must have the solo case set up in 2021. Mm -hmm. okay? You don't have to make the contributions yet. You get a little more time to make the contributions. But if you want 2021 contributions, you have to set it up by December 31st, 2020. All right, say one more time yeah. so people can get that. Do it one more time. You got to set it up this year. Yeah, got to set up this year. If you want tax deductions for 2021 or you want to make 2021 contributions based on your 2021 income for a solo K, you must have the solo K set up and establish the plan created by December 31st, 2021. Don't call us on December 30th. We ain't gonna do it. Mm -hmm. That's that's my Utah. But you don't have to contribute time. this year yet. Yeah, you don't have to contribute. Exactly. If you're like, guys, I don't, I'm not ready to contribute. I don't know what my tax situation is gonna be like. I'm gonna close out my books at the end of December. Cool. You can think about that in January. And depending on your business structure and whether you got to do a W-2 or you're sole proprietor, you get a little more time to make the contribution. Mm -hmm. So, but you've got to have the solo 401k plan set up by year end. So because of that, the law firm does a special mm. it's 50 bucks off right now on the docs only solo K in the law firm to get it set up. We are giving you 50 bucks off and directed on mm -hmm. the solo K too. It's just a little note there mm -hmm. um, to try and get you incentivized to do it in November because everyone rushes in in December. And so we're trying to like, please come in November so we can get it done for you and not be stressing us and you to get it set up in time for 2021 deductions. So you got time. The moral of the story is you got time. Mm -hmm. Get it set up this year. A lot of people are already asking, is there still time? Yes, there is, but get on it now because it takes a little bit of time to adopt the plan, set it all up. Yeah. So just get it done. And if if the husband and wife, if y'all are the two, um, and we're going to touch on that, but I just, let me hit on it real quick. You're, you're not combining accounts. You're going to have separate accounts as part of the plan. Okay. So that's key too. A lot of people forget that. They're like, the husband got it going or something. I'm like, what about the yeah. spouse? Like, well, you both need it. Yeah, and I'm going to hit this little diagram here, but let me share the screen so you can yeah, see be... it. It'll be a better, little bit better definition. Um, so, whoops, there it goes. All right, so let's just focus on this right side here, okay? I just want to talk about how the solo K works over here. And I know you're seeing the screen and not me, but I'm going to be watching this here <laughs> on the screen. <laughs> So the first thing to remember about a solo K is a business creates a solo K, right? Individuals create IRAs, individual retirement accounts, but businesses create 401ks like a solo K. Solo K is really just means there's one owner, there's no employees. Maybe there's a partner or a spouse involved. That's cool. You can still do a solo K there, but there's no other employees besides the business owner. That's where the solo K works. Sometimes it's called an individual K, solo K, same thing. But if you think about a 401k, think of like Dunder Mifflin, right? Dunder Mifflin can create a 401k plan, all right? And for all of its employees, so Dwight can have an account, Michael Scott can have an account, Pam can have an account, Jim, Jim even can have an account, okay? They even let Toby have an account, all right? At, maybe. In the office. So, maybe, maybe. Yeah, maybe. maybe. So <laughs> you've got this, so, so you have a 401k plan, but each employee has an account in it. Now, think of a solo 401k, just small business owner, solopreneur, self-employed person, no other employees. You also have to have a 401k plan. There's just one employee, you. And you could also do a spouse that still qualifies and they have a separate account. You have a business partner in the company, they have a separate account too. So that, that works. Now let's think, go back to the office because it's an important point. Let's say you have a day job that has a 401k. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's say you're Dwight Schrute. Okay, mm -hmm. think of Dwight Schrute from The Office. Everybody's seen that if you haven't seen it. Assistant to the assistant manager. Yeah, assistant yeah. to the regional manager. Yes, something. thank you. So Dwight Schrute, he could participate in the Dunder Mifflin 401k, but what about Schrute Farms that Dwight has? Dwight mm -hmm. has his own little Schrute Farms business that he like, you know, he does post wedding events and all that. It's a beet farm. Yeah, the beet farm. I mean, he could adopt a solo K there. He's got no employees. It's just him. It's a little side hustle, so to speak. Mm -hmm. That could have his own solo K, that business, Shrew Farms, for the benefit of Dwight Shrew. But Dwight Shrew cannot go out and set up an IRA. Mm -hmm. You have to have a business that adopts. Sorry, Dwight Shrew cannot go out and set up a 401k. You can do an IRA. Dwight Shrew cannot go out and set up a 401k. Okay, but Shrew Farms is a business that can create a 401k for its great employee, Dwight Shrew. All right. Okay. So we have to have a business. Now, what qualifies as a business? 
the most common problem that mm -hmm. clients will do is the rental LLC. Mm -hmm. They're like, but Matt, I have an LLC with no employees. It's um, it's got rental income. Mm -hmm. Can I use that to adopt my solo 401k? Nope. Yeah. <clears throat> because rental income is not ordinary income that you pay employee wages on, right? Your rental income, you're not paying self-employment tax, you're not paying Medicare and Social Security. It's awesome for tax purposes, but it's not going to qualify you for wages and contributions to 401ks. So if you have that and you, maybe you've got some rentals and you've got no other way to do a solo K and you really want to do it, we can create a management company. The rental income, the rental company is going to pay revenue over the management company. And the management company can then adopt and create a solo 401k. So we've got some options here on what you can and can't do. Um, sorry, we've got some options on what you can do. <laughs> We're going to give you some options on what you can't do. We don't do that, actually. Sorry. <laughs> um, so a lot of people would like us to. Yeah, <laughs> I say <laughs> I came out wrong. Sometimes, sometimes I catch it. Sometimes I just say I don't even catch it. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, Ooh, this was any? good. Well, just on the contribution part. Okay. On that 25%, 20% uh, part for what, what you're actually contributing. Because a lot of people are like, you know, so we had one person just post in, they own a pest control business, okay? S Corp, they're the only employee, you know. Love it. Uh, 150K a year gross, okay? Paid himself 26,000 in W-2 income. What's Love the max it. I can contribute this year in my solo K? Oh, I love this question. That's a great, thank you, Nick. Nick, so. love your question, because this is going to teach what we need to talk about next. <laughs> and Aaron's so good, he knows what to do Okay. All right, so how do you get money in the solo K? Think of the 401K and what we know about 401Ks. When you put money in a 401K, like you put money in as an employee, right? And they take that from your paycheck. Think of the Pam at Dunder Mifflin. Mm -hmm. But then the company does a little match, too. The company throws in some money, too, and says, hey, we're going to match. If you put in some money, we'll throw in some money. We're trying to incentivize you. And that's how one of the key things of 401ks. Well, in the solo K, it works the same way, but you're going to maximize it and juice the company contribution because there's no other employees than you. And let's just put the max in because I'm such a great employee mm -hmm. of what Amazing. I can justify. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of companies will do like kind of 3% of what you make. They'll match or maybe five. In the solo K world, we're going to go up to 25%, which is the max allowed, for example, in an S corp. So if, they if you took a W-2 of 26,000, 26 K, yeah. Okay, 26,000. <clears> There's two ways you get money in the solo K. First is the employee contribution, which the max is 19,5, okay? 19,500. 19,500, that's how much you can put in. Um, and then you could do that as Roth or traditional. You get a pick. Remember, if you do traditional, it's a, dedu it's a deduction, and this goes on your W-2, so you mm -hmm. got to coordinate with your accountant to say, hey, or whoever does your payroll, I threw some money in a 401k as an employee. How much? I did. I maxed out and did the 19.5. If you're 50 or older, you get to do an extra 6,000. I actually need a 7,000 for next year, mm -hmm. um, but we'll come to that in a moment. So let's just go with, let's say Nick's 40, okay? He does 19.5. On top of that, he gets to do 25% of the 26,000 because the company gets to do a match that's 25% of whatever the W-2 was. So 25% of 26,000 is? 6,500. 6,500, okay, perfect. So on 19.5, he's putting in 26,000, sorry, he did 19.5 employee, 6,500 employer, that's 26,000 total in contributions he gets to put in. On a $26,000 W-2. Pretty amazing. So. Let's, let me do an easier example just see if the math works faster. Let's say you did 100,000 W-2, 19.5 plus 25% of 100,000, which is 25,000. So 25,000 plus 19.5 is 39, sorry. That is, what is that? 19.5 uh, plus 25,000 is... Oh, sorry. sorry. I was reading Q&A. <laughs> Aaron, Aaron was, we were doing numbers earlier today. and 44.5. 45. Uh, 44.5. Okay, so if 100,000, you can put in 44,500. Aaron's usually a human calculator, actually. So, um, Okay, so that's how it works. Remember, now let's say you had a 10,000 W-2. How much can you put in? 10 grand. Mm -hmm. 
100,000 W-2 as an employee, well, sorry, 10,000 W-2, you could put in 10 grand employee, 25% employer, 2,500 bucks. So hope that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Any questions on the employee, employer? Okay, um, those over 50, you get a little 6,000 kicker up to sets up to 7,000 actually, no, sorry. So on, so piggybacking off that, you know, this is a good kind of tax question. If they do the solo 401k for that business, will it help them reduce their income on their 1040 or their tax return for the LLC? Okay, so are they, I presume they're a sole proprietor? Yeah. Okay, if you're a, if you're a sole proprietor, um, it actually goes and you make a contribution to your solo K, it's gonna go on your 1040. It actually goes on what's called schedule one. There we go. It's a, it's a unique little form on your 1040 that a lot of times you don't have to do with additions and subtractions to income. It's called schedule one. It's not technically on your schedule C, you would think it would be, but it, and some people take it there incorrectly, but it's technically schedule one is where you do a solo K contribution. If you're self-employed, and let's say you're an S corp, if you're an S corp, your employee contribution is going on your W-2, even if it's Roth, mm -hmm. it still goes on there. Traditional, it's going to go on there. And the company match is going on the 1120S, that's your S corp's tax return. And there's a line on the 1120S for retirement plan contributions. That, so the company takes an expense for that. Cool. All right. Okay. All right. We'll um, continue on with the slide presentation at this time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's jump back to the slides here. All good stuff. Okay. Um, all right. What I'm showing here is basically how you can get money in. We've talked about um, the company putting money in, you putting money in as an employee, but you can also roll over funds. So let's say you've got an old employer 401k out there. You can roll that to the solo K. Let's say you've got an old IRA out there or even your self-directed IRA and you're like, I want to move to the solo K. You can roll that traditional IRA into the solo K. Now, Roth IRAs are quirky. Roth IRAs cannot go into a solo K. Mm -hmm. Even if you have a Roth account in a solo K, that's it's a bummer. quirky roll yeah. over. But we can do new contributions, of course. You can also roll over funds um, into the solo K as well. Okay. All right. Now, one thing that's unique about the solo K is that you can get checkbook control right out of the solo K mm -hmm. without the need of an LLC. Now, some clients still do a 401k LLC. This is a strategy where it, um, basically your solo K owns an LLC, LLC owns the asset. And most people do that for asset protection. But IRA clients, a lot of IRA clients, rather than their IRA owning real estate directly or an asset directly, they'll have their IRA own an LLC that has a bank account at the LLC level that they can manage and that LLC owns the asset. And a lot of people like that because they have, they have that checking account access and this quote unquote checkbook control. Well, in a solo K, you can have a bank checking account right at the solo K level. And we have banks we can work with that know how to do a solo 401k bank checking account. And you are a trustee of the solo K and can just sign for checks right out of it. We'll fund money out of your solo K or you can contribute directly to it if you're kind of doing it on your own. So the solo K, has a little nice feature in that you can have checkbook control right out of the solo K yourself. Okay. All right. Um, we've kind of talked about some of the requirements here. Remember, you must be self-employed with no employees. If you have employees um, that have worked for you for a year that are full-time and full-time under the rules, like 19 hours or more a week, the solo K is not going to work. You just, it's, you're gonna have to do a regular 401k mm -hmm. and to self-direct that is super complicated. We self-direct like in our law firm's 401k is self-directed and, um, and I do that and it's even a pain for me. Um, and I do this every day. So it's really hard to self-direct an employer plan. We're, that's a long-term plan for us to solve that solution in the space, um, but we're not there yet in rolling it out. So solo k, awesome, no employees. If you have 1099 people, don't worry about it. They're not employees. You can do a solo K with a lot of like real estate broker clients or people that have other agents for them. Yeah, yeah they 1099 them. Cool. You, you could still do a solo K as long as you don't have um, other full-time employees that have worked you for a year or longer. So contractor is okay. We'll just repeat that again. Contractor is okay. 
no full-time employees. Yeah. Not okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. Now here's a couple things you should know about the tax reporting for a solo K that's a little unique. In a, I'm just trying to get here, you know, I'm trying to get all caught up. <laughs> In a solo K, um, you do need to do a tax return for the solo K itself once mm -hmm. there's 250,000 or assets of assets or more in the solo K plan. So if you just started out, you put in 20 grand this year, 20 grand next year, no tax return. You're reporting the contributions on your company return or your W-2 or whatever you're do doing in your business, but there's no tax return at the 401k level of reporting to the IRS of really the 401k at all. Once you hit 250,000 of assets though, the solo K needs to start filing a tax return. It's called a 5,500 EZ. If you have a what's called a custodial solo K account at Directed, which we offer, um, we do that for you. If you don't, and you do what we have called an annual compliance plan, where you're kind of on your own, mm -hmm. then you'll need to do it yourself or pay your accountant or someone else to do it for you. So, um, so but remember, under 250, don't worry about the 5500 easy. All right. Which we'll hit on that in a minute, the kind of two different routes of going. So we have a good. Okay. Yeah. We'll summarize those two different account options yeah. once you have the solo case set up. And I, I, we got hundreds of people on live with us, which is always awesome. So we've got so many questions coming in. Don't worry if we don't get to yours and you need additional help, just go to directedira.com in the upper right hand corner, hit schedule new account. And if you're interested in setting up a new solo K plan, you can go to that page and visit with one of our solo K specialists right from there, free of charge, hang out with us for 15 minutes, we'll get your questions answered. We're not gonna give tax or legal advice, but we'll answer your questions on setting up a plan. Cool? Yeah. Um, okay, this is what I was talking about with the LLC. You may not need the LLC. Let's say you're gonna buy a rental property. Um, the, you could buy it directly from the solo K, you have a bank account, you could do that. Why would I do a 401k LLC here, Matt? Well, maybe you want some asset protection if mm -hmm. something happens on the rental, or maybe this is a property you're flipping. So you could you could do it there. Um, but and a lot but, of people do. Yeah, a lot of people do. So it's just up to you on whether you want the LLC. Remember, you don't need it for checkbook control, but it can be an asset protection tool. Okay. Um, all right, I think we've kind of talked about contribution rules. Um, we hit the 401k LLC. I'm just bouncing through some of these, the content here. Um, sometimes I get ahead of myself, you know. Let's talk about some of the assets, Aaron. Why don't you go mm -hmm. over this and some of the assets people are buying with the solo mm -hmm. K. So one of, the, one of the big ones we've been getting lately is, you know, I mean, I don't know what it's at right now, looking at Bitcoin, but is in the cryptocurrency space. So I've had a lot of people that have been setting up, you know, solo K plans and they want to, do crypto really is one of the main intents. And um, so you can totally do that. You can go create your own institutional account, you know, with an exchange. Uh, it's going to take a little while though. Yeah. And you got to have all the paperwork in order. Um, it's, it's no different than us going and, you know, trying to get an institutional account at directed IRA. Like, you know, the, a lot of the exchanges will permit that. Uh, but as popular as it then it can take a few months so just be prepared for that just setting expectations because you know it, if you're like me i just kind of want everything now we're kind of in instant gratification mode we're like i'm ready to go but we do have a solution that's much quicker than that if you do want to do that a lot of people um and we'll we'll throw that up, up here in a minute where you can just do our um a, a crypto solo 401k plan with us and we we connected with gemini's exchange which is a licensed trust company as well. And so we, we like that platform and you can get that done, you know, as soon as you have your solo K plan up and funded. So that's super quick as, as an alternative option. In addition to still doing the exchange, a lot of people do both. Um, so that's totally cool. But, you know, like we showed real estate, you can do some uh, promissory notes, um, you know, prefer that you did them secured. So there's some actual collateral um, you know, you can set up your own brokerage account. So let's say you went over to TD Ameritrade or Fidelity and you wanted to go get a brokerage account in the name of your 401k. 
you can totally do that. You can do precious metals. You can invest in private companies, other small businesses, startups. So just a lot of cool stuff. Like it, you have the run of the gamut. Um, you kind of get the best of both worlds from being able to, you know, self-direct, but also have, you know, complete control with, you know, being able to make the investment right out of your um, uh, uh, 401k bank account. So that's what's cool. I love it. Okay. Um, let's, let's talk about taking a 401k loan. Mm. Um, and let me share that slide actually. This actually came up last week. So when we were doing a presentation, a bunch of brokers, they're yeah. like, cause they're like, Hey, what, well, you know, my advisor said to like, put all my contributions into whole life policies. And I was like, Oh, okay. Uh, and, and one of the reasons they said that was cause they can go get a loan. They're yeah. Like, well, I can just borrow that money. I was like, Oh, well, hold on a minute. You can also do that in a solo can. they're like, well, they never told me that. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, of course, of course they didn't. Yeah. They don't. They don't really want you to do that. So let's let's hit on this because this is cool and gives you other options. Yeah. yeah. One thing that's unique on a 401k in general, and this would be again the Dunder Mifflin 401k. Maybe you got a day job with a 401k or your own business that you have a 401k plan. Most 401ks, including a solo k and our solo k plan, has a participant loan option where mm. you can loan yourself half the balance of the 401k not to exceed 50,000. So if you have a 200,000 401k, you could take half the balance, 100,000, not to exceed 50, okay, I can take 50. If you got an 80,000 401k, you could take half the balance, 40k, not to exceed 50, okay, I can take 40k, <laughs> all right? So now you have to pay it back over five years. Mm -hmm. um, you got to at least make quarterly payments. You can't just do a lump sum at the end of five years. No balloon payments. Yeah, no balloon. And you pay prime plus 2%. Um, I think, I don't know, it's around five and a quarter now. Mm -hmm. Solana's in the chat here. Who, is she on? Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. Solana probably knows that. Make confirm that I'm right on that. I just, uh, Solana oversees our solo K accounts over here. So yep, it's right. So, okay. She just said 3.25. All right, okay, right. so, um, but that interest, you're paying back on that loan, you're paying your 401k back. Now, a lot of people use the solo K loan to pay down high interest debt, to maybe do some startup money to start a small business. And maybe that small business, like I have a lot of clients that'll come here and be like, Matt, set up a new LLC or solo or S Corp. I'm starting this new small business. That I'm gonna be self-employed at, and but I need some startup capital. Let's roll over your old employer 401k that you just left that job. Throw, if we put 100,000 in the solo K, I can loan you out 50 grand without having to take a distribution or anything. And now you can get off and start up your business you're going to pay it back over five years, but you're paying yourself back. You're not paying the bank. You're not losing interest. You're paying it, but you're effectively juicing your 401k on mm -hmm. your way back while getting access to that money. So it can really be a win-win um, and a good way to access money in your account as needed um, without having to take a distribution. Love it. Can't do that in an IRA. All right. Now, one thing that's a little unique on solo case that sometimes it's confusing and gets messed up is the minimum distribution rules. So with retirement accounts in general, there's something called RMD, required minimum distribution. This is a certain amount of money you have to start taking out of the account once you hit age 72. They used to be 70 and a half, it's now 72. So let's say you have $100,000 in your solo K and you're 72. Once you hit that age, the IRS is like, you know what? We want you to start taking a piece of this out every year. And maybe mm -hmm. at 72, it's about three or 4%. So you got a hundred thousand dollar count. They're gonna make you take out three or four grand a year right now. And, you, and the older you get, like let's say you're 85, they might want you taking out eight or 9%. They're gonna start forcing you to take out more and more money as the older you get. The basic point is the IRS wants to, you to pay some tax on yeah, They wanna get paid. <laughs> yeah, because if you were a traditional 401k or this is traditional IRA too, like you've got tax deferral forever. The IRS has made no money on all this yeah. growth. You got tax deductions to put the money in. And they're like, uh-uh. At one point, you are paying yeah. some tax on these. So they force the money out. Now, in the IRA world, Roth IRAs are exempt from RMD. Well, why would the IRS let Roth IRAs off the hook? Well, money comes out of a Roth IRA and there's no tax on it. So they don't force you to take money on an uh, RMD out on a Roth IRA. But in a Roth 401k, even in your solo K, if you have a Roth account in your solo K, that is still subject to RMD. It's confusing. It makes no sense. Really. It's just a rule. 
Yeah, it's just a dumb rule. <laughs> so, but there's a way around it. Yeah, what's the strategy? So roll it, roll that Roth 401k out into a Roth IRA. Yeah. And avoid the RMD. Simple as that. Boom, problem solved. That's it. Just remember that for when you hit 72. And, you know, make a note of that. A little mental yeah. note. It'll come back in handy one day. <clears throat> okay. Um, let's talk about just getting started. Then we'll come back and we're going to do a lot of Q&A. There's a lot of questions mm -hmm. in here. Um, so we'll hit some Q&A. Um, the way we do it here is the law firm does the solo case setup. Now you can work with an attorney. It's 995 or you can do docs only, which is 495, and we set up your 401k plan. See, IRAs are basically model forms that, that you can tailor a little bit with the IRS, and they're kind of pre-done. They're like, just do it this way, and you're good. And so That's IRAs, why there's no setup fees. Yeah, there's usually yeah. not like a document fee to set up or a plan fee to adopt your IRA plan. Um, and so you pay maybe an account setup fee, 50 bucks, mm -hmm. you know, and then your annual fee. That's at least how we do it. Mm -hmm. But in the, in the 401k world, you have to have a plan document. And that plan document has to be a pre-approved with the IRS. And we have a pre-approved plan with the IRS and we pay the IRS we, you know, to get that approved. And we have to pay our service providers on that per plan that's on it to give us amendments and updates to it. So, and that's the same with anybody that offers 401k plans across all 401ks. So there's a fee to set up the 401k itself just for the document to get the plan set up, okay? So our fee is $495 to get the plan set up and, and that's uh, over at KKOS Lawyers. And that's a bargain, Yeah, as it is. That's a good <laughs> deal out there in terms of, and it's 50 bucks off right now mm -hmm. for the month of November, just remember. And then we're also discounting 50 bucks on new, on your first account set up over at um, Direct and if you do the custodial option. Mm -hmm. Now, some people come just like, man, I got a 401k I set up online on solo K a long time ago. It's a train wreck. I don't yeah. know if I even did it right. Um, the people I set it up with, uh, they worked out of their basement. They barely know what they're doing. Can you, I get over onto your document and restate? Yes, we have an option for that. It's called a restatement. It's 495. Okay, so you have your, let's say you get going, you have your, the 401k plan set up. Shroot Farms comes in. Dwight's like, all right, get the Shroot Farms solo K set up. So it's Shroot Farms solo 401k plan gets set up. Now, the next thing you need to do is you need to open an account for the individuals in the plan. So Dwight Schrute is going to want an account. Now, maybe Dwight wants a traditional account and a Roth account. Well, that's if you want to do custodial accounts where we book it, we do statements, we do your 5500EZ, we do 1099Rs if you do Roth conversions or you take distributions, like that's $350 for your first account and $250 for your traditional account. And that's an annual fee for your solo K account fees, not the plan, it's the account fees. Now, some people are like, you know, I don't really don't need you guys to do that. I'm good doing it myself. Cool. We have an annual compliance plan. It's 150 bucks annually for the plan. We're just going to give you plan amendments. The do-it-yourself option. Yeah. And that's the do-it-yourselfers. And that's the DIY for many self-directed people. That's their mentality. They're kind of want to cool. do it their own way. Cool. Um, and just make sure you're doing it right and keeping your things accurate. Make sure you're up to speed on the rules. Um, it's not rocket science, but it can take a little bit of work. Give us timelines, like give us, a, give me a time frame. Let's say, let me give you an example. I'm, I'm new, I, you know, I, True Farms is rocking and rolling, yeah. but I want to set up a solo K plan. I want to get it funded. I got some funds to roll over. I'm going to do some new contributions and I want to make my first investment. Yeah. Like, what am I looking at? Okay. We can get your 401k plan set up, you know, the plan documents within a week. Now, if you want an attorney, the full service, the law firm takes a while. So you gotta wait for an appointment with yeah, one of the attorneys. Right. Like, uh, there we go. Yep. Okay. So one more. Go for it. Yep. Okay. So the attorneys are gonna take some time. Um, just you know, this is the year end. It's tax planning season for all of our attorneys, so they're kind of backed up right now. So um, if you need an attorney consult, just know it might take a week or two at least to get the consult. Then another week or so to get the plan set up. That's why we're trying to get clients going in November. So you're done by year end. So it could take a month. So it, it could, could take four to six weeks. Yeah, it could take three to four weeks to get set up um, with an attorney set. Now, if you're like, I don't need the attorney counsel, go docs only. That you're stuck to your 401k plan set up in a week. And then we get your account set up over at Directed for if it's just you or maybe your spouse or maybe you're doing two accounts because you want Roth and traditional. So we get the individual account set up over here. 
that's in one business day upon you just filling out the application. Mm -hmm. So that's quick. And then you fund it. Now, are you rolling over money? Mm -hmm. Or are you making just a new contribution? And well, obviously, the new contribution is fast because that's as fast yeah. as you can get us the money. The, the rollover, that's a little tricky um, just because we're, you're kind of at the mercy of where those funds are coming from. And they typically want to send us a check. So then they want to mail us it. They like want to snail mail us a check in the post office. In the post office. <laughs> so then we get it. You know, that could take a week. So try and get it, them to expedite it and pay a fee if you're in a hurry. Tell them you want to expedite it. And then we're going to get it. And then it's usually, what, about five business days to clear on our end, you know, for, for it to actually post. So those are kind of the timelines. Now, once, once it's fully funded, um, you know, again, contributions or, or rollover funds, then you can go invest. And the investing part is like as soon as you have an investment and complete the investment documentation. Yeah. Now, again, we've had a lot of people going into crypto. If you're trying to then set up an institutional account with an exchange, I don't know. Like, you know, some people have gotten a Coinbase account up in a month. Others have gone to like Kraken. That took like three months. Like it, we, have, we don't know. Like it's mm -hmm. just kind of, we just get feedback uh, from each of you and you, you kind of let us know. And that's why to, to answer, to be a solution for that, we, that's why we came out with our custodial crypto account yeah. option. So with Gemini, yeah. you can do that too. You can have both. You can do both. Mm -hmm. There you go. All righty. Okay. What else we got? Um, I was just throwing this up. These are the four key points. You can throw over. This is just a summary. Oh, this is on the Solo K website page. You just go to the Directed IRA Solo K page. Number one, you can throw over 50 grand a year on a Solo K, 58,000. Two, you can self trustee it where you can have the checking account right at the Solo K level. You don't need an LLC if you don't want it. You can use it for asset protection, but you get a little more control on a solo K than an IRA because of, because of that. You get the checking account right at the solo K level. Um, in order to qualify, remember, you have to be self-employed with no employees. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and then the last one, which is cool and unique, is you can have Roth and traditional accounts. I love it. Okay. There was one question I saw pop up in the q and I'll hit that, and then you let me know when We're you're going to go. Questions. I'll tell you what. Since we got time, we'll do rapid fire Q and A at okay. the end and just go for it. I like it. So okay. just hang tight. We got two hundred of our best friends <laughs> on live with us. So thank you. All right. Um, I, I did see a question coming about the mega backdoor Roth and how that works. So basically, what that is, and there's different versions of it, but let's just say you want to get as much Roth dollars in as possible in your solo K. Okay, let me let's go back to the hundred thousand. You had a hundred thousand dollar W two. How can I? How much can I do Roth on that? Okay, well you can do nineteen five of Roth. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's right straight nineteen five. You made it. You can throw it nineteen five. Now you can do the employer match of twenty five percent, and which would be twenty five thousand in that case. Remember that was forty four thousand five hundred. Mm -hmm. Right, you did the math mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that. That 25%, 25,000, that's traditional dollars though. So I only got 19,500 of Roth and I got 25,000 of traditional. Well, the easiest way is you can just convert those traditional dollars right there, that 25,000 over to Roth, okay? So it's a two-step process. On the one hand, I put the 25,000 in, I got a tax deduction, I got an expense on my business return. In this case, I'm doing the S Corp as an example. And then I get a 1099R converting it to Roth, which I pick up as income. So the two things kind of wash out, really. Mm -hmm. But if you remember, at the end of the day there, I've got 44,500 of Roth off of 100,000 W-2. All Roth. Those are all Roth dollars. It just took a two-step process on the making the employer contribution and converting it to Roth. Now, that's the easy way to kind of max out Roth dollars, but it's not the only way. The second option is, let's say it's like, man, but I don't want to take a $100,000 W-2. I'm just going to take like a $60,000 W-2 or maybe 65. Let's say I've taken a $65,000 W-2. Okay. I want to do all Roth. I want to get 58,000 into mm -hmm. Roth. How do I do it? Okay. Let's do 19.5 in Roth. It's just new Roth contributions. Totally fine. The balance of that to get to 58,000, which would be... 38,500, mm -hmm. okay, um, is that right? 
or 37,500 or I don't know. So 38, yeah, 19.5 already. Mm -hmm. I need to get to 58. Mm -hmm. So is that 38? 37.5. 37.5. Okay. Yeah, that sounds 38.5. 38,500. Okay. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, Jeff 38.5. Yeah, we need like a lifeline. Like, can I phone a friend or like, man, the, the, back in the day, who wants to be a millionaire? That was, that's a good show. That was good. That was a good one. Um, okay, focus now. Okay, nine, we're at 65,000 W2, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, did 19.5 of Roth. I got 38.5 left. I need to get to, um, Roth. to get to Roth. You can do an after-tax contribution of that employee after-tax contribution at 38.5. Now you need to set up a separate and unique account to track that after-tax contribution, and then you can convert it to Roth. Okay. Now this is called, this is the mega, sometimes called this is the mega backdoor Roth. Um, because you're not making the employer contribution and converting it, you're just doing more employee dollars, which doesn't have to follow the match 25% formula. It can just be dollar for dollar as long as you've made that. So, but, but what if I only did a 40,000 W2? Well, I can only do 40,000. I could do 19,500 and then I could do another 20,500, like is, is after tax. So you're going to be limited to how much your wages or your W2 is in an S Corp on that. Now, let me say that is a complicated strategy right there. If you're like, hey, this is hard. I talked to my accountant. They didn't know how to do this. So what are you guys talking about? Or I went to directed IRA and you didn't have like an easy form on this. And, and how come it was so hard? Because it it's a complicated <laughs> technical tax strategy, okay? It's not the plain vanilla way everyone's doing this. So we don't like throw it out there to because not everyone can, frankly, not everyone has the money to do a mega backdoor on their mm -hmm. account every year, okay? So we all um, like to think we do. Yeah, and it is complicated. And if you're one of the ones that can do this every year, bless you. We have a strategy for it. Um, and it's cool, but it takes a little bit of work. We do have like Solana, you know, and some of our other team members that are ex more experienced can, can help walk you through that. So, um, but there's a way, just know, there's a way to really max out those Roth dollars. Because we do love Roth at the end of the mm -hmm. day. You better believe we're gonna have a way to do it. Roth, Roth, baby. Yeah, I just don't want you to feel like, how come I don't just have an easy button, mm -hmm. you know? Because because frankly, it's a systems issue of how we have to drop your money in and track it from a record keeping standpoint to make it legit. Because you're really using a tax loophole here and tax loopholes aren't just like, you just walk through it. They're not tax to loopholes be easy. are like, you gotta do this and then we're gonna do this and then we're gonna do this and then we get you back over here and we snuck you right through. Okay, that's the point of a tax loophole. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Jimmy. We will Roth you. <laughs> that's a good one. That was a good one. We haven't used that one before. Yeah. We've we done Roth will, and roll. But... We will Roth you. Yeah. We <laughs> should right. we should update like our old music and we, like we we'll dub that in Roth over rock. Um just uh, so the BBB plan that, that you know a lot of people ask questions. The build back about, better or yes. the reconciliation bill. Yes, yeah, that that one. Um, I like to call it the BBB. Okay. Yeah. Um, you got BBB. <laughs> Will that uh, take the four hundred one k away from us? A lot of people are asking how that affect four hundred one k's or solo k's. They came out. Yeah. So um, the build back better or the reconciliation bill. Um, 401 ks were not targeted in that except on the cap and Roth conversions. So. There's the 10 million cap would still apply. That's in the bill still and all the amendments. And if you got that, bless you. Like yeah. Party at your place. Yeah, yeah. So sorry, we will be limited to the 10 million cap as the bill goes through as is. And um, the Roth conversions, if you're high income, you're not gonna be able to convert to Roth anymore, period. Um, and that's on 401ks and IRAs. So that's a bummer too. Um, but so the, it's not taking it away though. It's yeah. Not. The investment restrictions, though, that were in the bill that would have applied to IRAs have been kicked out. So that's the good news. So the stuff that would have hurt, like IRA will seize or investing in private companies with an IRA, those got killed. Luckily, we have allies in Congress who get it. Um, we work tirelessly on that, and those got killed. But the cap is pretty popular from progressive Democrats who are really pushing the bill. Um, that's who's in Congress and in control. And so, you know, that that's that's still out there, and that can hit your 401k. So. All right, should we throw up uh, the special pricing so they just know what to use? Yeah. On the very end. 
Oh, uh, very I, last I switched line. off to yeah. the website there, but I'll do it here. So we'll just go to the last one. Yeah, there you go. So that's for new accounts at Directed. You can just use Webinar 50. So whether you're doing a traditional IRA and a Roth IRA, it can apply to both. So just give you a $50 discount off of each of those. And then you also got the Solo K uh, special going for docs only yeah. at the law firm at kqslawyers.com. Yeah. And you can get 50 bucks off of the 495 docs only. So yeah. it'll be 445. Yeah. There you go. So th that's that's the special dealios going. Okay, let's show we do rapid fire QA for like okay. five minutes or yeah. so. It's okay. Off and roll. Here we go. We got we were Rothy, we got Roth on. Like people are just <laughs> people are just thank you for your contributions. <laughs> that's a good one too. <laughs> so um, okay, these are good. So these are time account jokes. These are great. <laughs> you know, take taking like a dry industry and just making it great, making it funny. Um, I'm a Forex trader or, you know, day trader. Can I use an escort to then put my investment money that I'm getting from that, pay myself a salary and open a solo 401k? Yes, you can, but you may not want to. So if you're a trader, trader, you can take trader income status, you know, um, or you can kind of keep it as like, well, I'm just tracking my short-term, long-term gains. So you can say, no, I want to be like a business. And I'm going to expense everything in it, but I'm going to pay Medicare and Social Security tax and everything on my profits. And I'm going to take a W-2 if I'm doing an S-Corp. And so you can do that, but just know there's other tax ramifications. Yes, it would let you do a solo K, but you're, change, you're changing the nature of your income. Now, some traders do that anyway. Mm -hmm. They're like, this is my business. I, I'm not just tracking this as short-term, long-term capital gains and trying to get out of Medicare and Social Security tax, self-employment tax. Yeah. So um, so there's a lot of resources out there if you just go into like, you know, trader income and whether to book it as business income or investment income. Everybody seems to have an opinion on it in the tax and legal space. But yes, if you did the S-Corp route, yes, you could do a solo K. Here's this is our solo K page. You can just go to directedira.com and hit the solo K page under account types. If you have additional questions we don't get to, just go to a schedule new account call. There's a solo 401k section that you can go have a free um, educational session with one of our solo K specialists. Um, okay, so getting a lot of stuff on setting up like a MetaMask wallet with my solo K or, you know, accessing a decentralized exchange, you know, setting it, you know, with the, my crypto wallet with my solo K. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. mining, yield farming, all the above. How much time do we have left? <laughs> so so okay. let's answer the easier ones. There we'll we get, go. We'll kind of go in order. Those are all different answers. So let's just say you want to have a, a hardware wallet. Like you want, let's just like, do that. okay, you want, you want, uh, you're not putting it on online, you know, it's not going to be on an exchange. You want like a cold storage in your hand type wallet or on hardware that, that's in your possession. You can do that in a solo K. The solo K just has to own it. Okay, so don't mix it in with your personal crypto. Keep those separate. Um, but the wallet that has your retirement account, your solo K's crypto, the solo K should pay for it. Okay. Now let's go about yield farming. Okay. Well, yield farming, I don't know what the hell that means. Pardon my French. Uh, Was that French? That's not French, but you know what I mean. Sorry. Um, is, sorry, I'm just, if you can't tell, I'm just kind of in a mood this afternoon, apparently. I, I feel like I'm kind of off a little, actually. We need like, to get, it's because you got water in there, no caffeine. I know, maybe it's, that's the problem. I need to get like, I need to go to Starbucks and get something with caffeine. Okay. Yield farming. Here's the retirement account rule. If you get interest income, cool. So if I'm lending crypto out and I'm getting crypto back as an interest payment or fiat currency dollars, let's say back off my crypto, cool. That's Don't worry about that. Your retirement account can do that. No weird taxes like UBIT or anything you need to worry about. But what if you're staking that crypto? <clears throat> well, staking of crypto can cause UBIT. Mm -hmm. It's kind of an unsettled area. Mining 
of crypto when an IRA or 401k causes UBIT. So we have other strategies on that. We have a prior webinar on that. The same strategy for IRAs works for solo Ks if you're wanting to mine crypto. But staking is kind of a gray area. We'll see if the IRS puts their hand in it and says this is how it's going to go. But so far, it's kind of been silence on that and how that's going to get treated. So if I'm just getting yield on my crypto for lending it out, that's fine. No weird tax mm -hmm. issues, your crypto Interesting grows. Income. You've got risk that they don't pay you back. So be careful on who you're giving your crypto to and mm -hmm. get to get yield. That's one thing. It's, it's like an unsecured promissory note. If the market's been going up like this, no one cares. Like there's little risk. Yeah. But if the market crashes, there's going to be some of these people doing yield that aren't going to have your crypto. Exactly. And so there's some risk in that. And I've looked into doing it myself just because I like to be a model for a lot of clients. And this is one experiment I was like, I passed on. I'm like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> Um, do you need to renew any paperwork yearly with my with a solo K or is it one and done? Well, if you make new contributions, you know, those need to get recorded, but that's on your person, that's on your business tax stuff. That's on mm -hmm. your W-2 if you're an S Corp or Schedule 1, Schedule C in your um, sole proprietorship um, or on your S Corp return to the company you've matched. So that's it's not really on the 401k side. It's just kind of more on the business side of the 401k contribution. So you want to be talking to your accountant or payroll provider as you make contributions. Until you hit 250, there's no annual reporting or anything you send in. 250,000. 250,000. Yeah. Um, market value of the solo K. That's key. Market value. Um, I got a solo 401k at a broker. Let's say call it TD Ameritrade. Yeah. Can I keep that account over there? Or I want to do real estate as well. Yeah. So, but I got a solo K at TD. Do I need to do a new solo 401k to invest in real estate or do crypto? Like, yeah. or can I keep the one at TD and what do I got to do? A lot of broker dealers offer you a free solo K account if you're hostage with them. So TD, for example, will say, we'll set up a free solo K for you, but you can't go anywhere else. <laughs> you're stuck here. That solo K will not work anywhere else. Um, so if you're like, but I want to self-direct, what you need to do is then just set up a new solo. We could actually probably restate the solo K plan. So we could keep the same plan name and everything. We restate it to our document set. You'd close out your brokerage account at TD, and then you'd have a self-directed solo K. Now, what you can do with the self-directed solo K, like one that we are plan document, is you can go back to TD and say, hey, open up a brokerage account. I have my own solo K plan. It's a different just account set up on their end. Mm -hmm. You're not on their hostage solo K. You're on your own kind of 401k plan document and they'll open up a brokerage account for that solo K directly. So that's better because now I can self-direct it. I can have my bank checking account with it. I can have a, a brokerage account if I want. I can self-direct. I can trade stock. What's that? Uh, what's it called on the brokerage side when you're setting up a solo K? With a non-prototype, is that yeah, non-prototype, yeah, non-prototype non plan. Okay. Sometimes that's the lingo to look for, like at a Schwab or a TD or even a Fidelity. Like if you're trying to put qualified plan or something, they may kick that out. So you're looking for like a non-prototype. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so just a little trick there. Um, let's see. We did the crypto mining. Okay. Oh, this is good. Can I use my solo 401k account to invest in a company that I have 45% ownership of. Oh, okay. Or could, um, I, or could I use it as a down payment for the, for, and for a business loan as well? So two part question. Thank you, John. Okay. First question was, can I use my solo K to invest in a company I own 45% of? Uh -huh. And I presume the other 55% is someone totally unrelated to you. Just uh, hell, like, let's just say yeah, as an example. It's not your spouse. Okay. Yeah. Right. Hold, let's, hope. let's hope that's the case. Okay. But your spouse is not going to work okay? or like, you know, your kids or parents, those are all prohibited. So you yeah. know, over 50%. So the rule is your retirement account in general, IRAs or 401ks, cannot transact with companies you own 50% or more of. You or anybody disqualified to your account. Okay, John's only 45%. He's under the 50% rule. But there's another rule that says also your retirement account can't make investments that benefit you financially, mm -hmm. personally. So if I'm in there at 45% and my 401k, let's say loans, makes a loan as an investment um, to that company mm -hmm. and maybe loans yep. $200,000, let's say. It's just like working capital in that business or yeah, buys yeah. inventory or whatever. It's growing, buying a property, I don't know. 
Um, well, did that benefit you personally and kind of bail you out in the business and help save it because it needed the capital? And, and that's kind of a gray area. I'm always like, 45% is pretty aggressive to me. It's not automatically prohibited. So we'd allow it if you wanted. But I like if my advice as an attorney is there's some risk factors there on whether you benefited or not. The cases are all over the place. I have a chapter in my book on self-dealing privilege transactions. The cases are all over the place on it. Sometimes people win at 30%. Sometimes they lose at 25. It's kind of all over. So it'll depend on the terms of the deal too. If like you loan the money at like 15% interest, it's like, okay, but then if you wanted it at 2% interest, it's like, well, was that market? Was there something weird going on here? That's going to look bad. But if it was like, nah, it's like 6% or 7% interest, basically like what commercial business loan would be for that small business of yours or big business of yours, whatever it is, like that's, that's what we want to look is make sure that the loan terms are more market rate. Now, if you were like 25% or even below a third, I'm a little more like, I think you're okay. Mm -hmm. Over a third to 50%, I'm kind of like, eh, I don't know. If you're okay with taking risks, like, you know, are you the person that drives 65 in a 65 or do you drive 74? I don't know. I drive 80. It's what, what, how, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we're all different. I'm just, you know, in the gray areas, we can just kind of give you the, you know, kind of a feel for where you cross the line for sure, but then but it's on you. Some clients are fine taking the risk. Other clients are like, no, thanks you for the advice. I'm not interested. Others are like trying to push the envelope. Well, how come I can't do it? I don't know, right? You're congressman. But if you want to, just mm -hmm. know the risks. Uh, let's head on this again. Um, I, I set up an LLC. Uh, okay. okay. So, okay, LLC. Okay. Can I get both traditional and Roth funds into that same LLC? Mm, great question. So that's a very good one. Or yes. do I need to keep them in separate bank accounts? Okay. It's actually a complicated question. But <laughs> the short answer is, well, the, the, the good answer is yes. You can get your Roth funds and your traditional funds in the LLC, the 401k LLC. But we need to break up the ownership between the two because we need to track those investments between there you the go. two. So if you have you know, 40 grand in your Roth and 60 grand in your traditional and you set up a new LLC, we're going to break up the ownership of that LLC, 40% of the Roth, 60% of the traditional. And it's going to be a multi-member LLC, which means you want to follow the multi-member rules, file a partnership tax return and all that. So um, that's, that's how the 401k LLC is going to generally work is it's possible to combine all these multiple accounts, your traditional and Roth, just like you could do your traditional IRA and your Roth IRA, but it's going to turn it into multi-member. So a follow-up on our little example where I have the pest control company and I took the 26,000 in W-2 income. If I take, if I do the max uh, employee contribution of 19.5, does that lower my taxable income by 19.5 on my 1040? Um. Okay, he was an S corp, right? Mm -hmm. And he does the max of 19 is traditional. He didn't do Roth because he wanted its tax deduction. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's going to be on your W 2. It's going to reduce your W 2. So you know, your W 2 says you took 26 and you put 19.5 in, it's going to say the only taxable amount is the 6,500 difference. So when you enter your W 2 on your 1040, you're just putting in 6,500 bucks. I love it. Okay, so. Just to recap, we got a couple specials going on. You can get $50 off doing Webinar 50 for opening up an account at Directed IRA, traditional Roth. You can do both. We'd love it. You and a spouse, if you're the only employees in the company, you each can do your own accounts. We also have the Docs Only plan a special going on at KQS Lawyers. You can take $50 off of that from $495 to $445. We'll have the slides up. So you can download those for PDF. You can go back and review uh, this presentation as well. And uh, that's what we got. I think we're good. We're a little yeah. over the hour mark. So I think we did pretty good. Answered almost 100 questions. So yeah, that was great too. Again, if you need additional help or questions about setting up a new Solo K plan or getting a, an IRA account open at Directed IRA, just go up here in the schedule. Oh, yeah, up there, right there schedule new account call and you can meet with one of our three solo case specialists. So yeah, that's all we got.
All right, and the promo code is webinar50. You can see here on the slide. Um, just put that in on section one on your new account application. And thanks everyone for hanging in there on this, um, being here to, to learn about solo case. And we love this stuff. Um, sorry for my, I think I had a couple of bad answers here today. I don't did know. you have a couple of bloopers? I felt like I kind Were of they did bloopers? Today. I don't know. I don't know. I had a that swear word. Bloopers. I had a swear word too. It was, it was a farm swear word, so it's not as bad. But, um, but we'll be back next month yes. with on a webinar. We're doing these monthly. Make mm -hmm. sure you're signed up for the newsletter so you're notified on that. Um, what are we talking about next month? Didn't we already decide? We're oh, going to go over yeah, we're small gonna dollar, guess. kind of small balance yeah. investing with IRAs. So if you got, you know, only around ten, twenty thousand dollars or so, we're going to talk about some creative strategies, uh, things that you could invest in that we've seen our clients do, and then we'll have a special guest uh, that's here local in Phoenix with this uh, that's doing some cool stuff on crowdfunding, backed by real estate too. So yeah, that's what we'll do. All right. So okay, stay calm, self-direct on, Roth on. <laughs> Rock on.